So welcome to Fearless Friday. This is Brian, I'm back one more time. Don't worry, Anthony will be back soon. We'll get him doing some Fearless Fridays. Maybe we'll get him doing some uh, Sunday videos too, who knows. But Anthony's been a little under the weather, so send him some love. He'll be up and uh, operational soon, and I'm sure killing it. So with that said, I wanna dive right into today's Fearless Friday video. In today's Fearless Friday video, I wanna talk with you about communication, starting conversations, on the street with strangers, with beautiful women, and getting those conversations flowing naturally. And this is something I observed years ago, or something I kind of figured out years ago when I was just hanging out. I actually figured it out in an Apple store of all places, and I started using it ever since, and I started using it in casual conversation, or start to start casual conversations. I started using it when I was in stores where people were lounging around, or was at the coffee shop, or was at a restaurant, wherever there just happens to be people just kind of milling about or hanging out. I didn't really use it so much with women walking down the street that I had to stop directly, although it could be used for that too. But let's dive right in. Let me explain the process to you, and then I'm going to invite you to go out and practice it this weekend to create some powerful connections for you. Now, number one, when you do this, you have to find something you're genuinely interested in. I'm about to explain what that means. You have to be real. You have to be authentic. You see, The Fearless Man is all about embodiment. All our programs are to help you get more embodied. Speak from the heart, speak from the gut, speak from your turn on, speak from your curiosity, speak from your pre appreciation, speak from your joy. A lot of guys, the, the reason techniques on other channels don't work, a lot of channels have great techniques, systems and processes for meeting women, but they don't work for a lot of guys because the guys are so analytical, so in their head and so disconnected from feeling, feeling of real emotions, real sensations, and, uh, and conveying that when they communicate, that they come across as fake and phony. So if you're having that problem, then you definitely need to take care of that. We address that in some of the other videos, we address it all the time actually. Uh, we address it in our workshops, we address it in our trainings and so forth. For now though, I'm gonna be talking about a simple system. Uh, if you got a little bit of feeling, this should really help you to get a conversation started and flowing. What you're gonna need in this one is true curiosity or, or some type of a, a, a good emotion with whatever you're observing. So I want you to look around. Uh, let me go back actually and explain how I did it originally. When I went into this Apple store one time and I was kind of hanging out and I was trying to figure out how to start some conversations with girls. And this is, I, I was just beginning, it was new to me. And I was standing at the counter and I was just looking at some different stuff and there was this cute girl next to me. I wanted to start a conversation with her. And I thought to myself, what do I do? And then it hit me. I was staring at this huge monitor it was really big, it was probably the biggest monitor in the room. And immediately I thought to myself, wow, that thing is huge. And there was this sense of curiosity about it and this sense of actually kind of an attraction to it being a guy. I'm like, I wouldn't mind having this huge monitor in my house when I'm doing work with, uh, with people, you know, pulling stuff up. You could, I, should, I, should, I could turn this into my TV, you know, it was really interesting. So immediately I looked at it and I said, wow, that thing is huge. And I, I expressed it out. I opened my heart, I opened my, wow, that thing is huge. And this girl was standing next to me. And then I said something like, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact words, but it's something to the effect of, wow, I'd love to have a monitor like that. What, what do you think? I'd say, do you like this monitor? And there was something to that effect. It was along those lines. And what ended up happening was she responded and joined into the conversation. Now, what made that work? First, I was looking at the monitor and I had this reaction to it. I had a curiosity about true, uh, true emotion. I expressed those true emotions from my body. Wow, that thing is huge. Look at that thing. What do you think of this? Would you buy a monitor like that? That's, that's basically what I did. And then she responded because she responded to my true authentic emotional expression, which women can't resist. When somebody's expressing authentically, realistically, is really open and emotional, and feeling something, women just get drawn to it. It's like, it's like getting drawn to a really good song. It's like getting drawn to a really good story. Women love people that are relating to their emotions and their feelings and they, and they get drawn into it, especially feminine women or women that are at all open in the moment. So it immediately started a conversation and she shared, yeah, that, that's awesome, but I think it might be a little too big for me. I can't remember what she said, kind of making it up. But then I responded back and we started naturally into a conversation. Well, I noticed this and I was like, wow, this is powerful. There's something about this. So I started to develop it more. And everywhere I went, I started to do it. I just started to 
express myself verbally out loud. And I started to uh, get curious, make conversation about it, make uh, statements about it. And then I would invite somebody near me into the conversation. So I, I would see something, I would have an emotional expression about it, then turn and connect to whoever's around me that I wanted to connect to, and I'd invite them into the conversation. Simple process. So let's say I'm standing at Starbucks and I want to get a coffee. And uh, I walk in in the morning, I'm a little tired, and I look for something authentic. I get in line, there's a cute girl next to me. And you can practice on everybody. It doesn't have to be a cute girl. It could be a dude, it could be a little old lady. It doesn't matter. Just make people smile because that'll make you warmed up and ready for the cute girl, sexy girl, hot girl later. Okay? So I'm standing there. And plus you're creating a lot of uh, happy people in the world. And that, that's always awesome. So, uh, so I'm standing there. And let's say I'm, I'm standing there and she's right next to me. And I walk in and I go, oh man, I can't wait to get my coffee. I, I just can't function in the morning without my morning coffee. It smells so good, doesn't it? And then I look at her and she'll immediately be pulled into that because of the authenticity and the realness of it. She might be like, oh yeah, I feel the same way. Or she might say, oh, I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm just here to get a tea. And I'm like, oh really? What kind of tea do you drink? I love tea too. And I do, I actually, I, in the evenings I love my tea, in the morning I love my coffee. And, uh, and you go from there. And what that did was it invites people into a story that's already been put out. Like I'm putting into the environment these emotions and a story and some feelings, and I'm inviting people to join me in that, in that conversation. And it's really powerful for starting conversations. Yes, you have to continue the conversation after that, but you've got something to work off of. Now, how do I use this in approaching? Because I've used this many times in approaching, and it's a very simple process. I walk in, I see something, for example, the coffee. I observe it. I say, wow, that coffee smells so good. I can't function in the morning without my morning coffee. I can't wait to get that. The smell's even waking me up. And then, uh, and then how about you? Do you, do, you, you know, what kind of coffee do you like? That might be something I say. Or, or sometimes just saying it and looking at them will cause them to react. Sometimes I'll say it and I'll say, oh, I love my morning coffee. I can't function without it. I look at them and I go, so how are you doing this morning? And then they'll just immediately respond in kind. Oh, I feel the same way. I can't wait to get a coffee. Or they might say, I'm a, oh, I'm a total coffee addict. Or they might say, I'm more of a tea drinker. And then I can continue on that because like I said earlier, I love tea too. So I'll be like, oh yeah, I really love tea. What's your favorite kind? And you go from there and you build on that. What you're building on is authentic, real communication. In the beginning, it might be a little clunky as you're looking for stuff that really means something to you. But as you nail it, as you get this sense that this really matters to me and I'm gonna follow this thread or that thread and then I'm gonna invite people into it, it becomes that much more powerful. The more I did it, the easier it got and uh, the more powerful it got. So let's get back to talking about approaching on the street. How do I use this approaching on the street? I'm walking down the street, I see a girl I like, I'll stop and I'll ask a question. A simple question that I can truly be curious about. I do love coffee, it's one of my favorite drinks. It's actually in my genetics. My genetics says predisposed to drink more coffee, so I'm careful about how much I drink and I, I try to drink decaf a lot so I don't get too much caffeine. But still, I digress, let's come back. And see, I'm already starting to do it. I'm telling you more about me to create conversational topics. Now I go back and I stop uh, uh, a girl on the street, a cute girl, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh my god, I need a coffee shop. Now I didn't say, hey, do you know where the Starbucks is this time? This time I said, oh my god, I need a coffee shop. I love coffee. I'm missing my coffee right now. Do you know a good coffee shop around here? Do you see the emotional expression in what I just did? And she'll be like, uh, yeah, there's this great one right up the street called you know, Joe's Coffee, for example, or there's a Starbucks right around the corner. It doesn't matter what she says. She invites me, she comes back with something. And then I can genuinely be curious. If she doesn't respond right there, she might be like, oh yeah, I feel the same way sometimes. I love coffee. Uh, because I was so emotionally expressive, she's gonna enter into the conversation. It gives her permission. But let's say she doesn't. Let's say she goes, well, yeah, there's Joe's Coffee down the street. and. I could immediately enter into that conversation. Oh, is Joe's coffee really good? Is that, is that your favorite? You see, if I'm truly interested, it'll pull her in. Oh, I love Joe's coffee. I go there every morning. Or no, I just tried them for the first time. Information, information. Just tried them for the first time. Well, how were they? Let's say 
that she goes, no, nah, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but I just saw them. I might be like, well, I'm curious, are you from around here? And she'll be like, no, I'm visiting. Well, where are you visiting from? And I can, again, enter into true curiosity because one of the things I've cultivated, and you tend to on a direct stop, is curiosity about where people are from and um, curiosity about who they are and uh, what they're out doing because those are the most natural, easy topics to go into to start a conversation. So the immediate question um, that I follow up with is, you know, are you from around here? It enters, it gives me, I can go either direction. If they're not from around here, where are you from? If they are from around here, oh, so you're a local, so you know the area really well. Yeah, that's, well, that's awesome. What's it like living around here? I can immediately be curious about that because I've cultivated that curiosity inside me. So again, by starting with that blurting out, giving emotion, giving feeling, it allows me to enter into this discussion and then invite them in and allows me to find emotional threads, emotional threads, that's the word, emotional threads, I'll say it again, to build conversation off of. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's take a look at this a little bit more. When I stop somebody, um, I just immediately share something. I used to call it blurting, but I'd blurt out something. I'd say, oh my God, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Look, look how beautiful the day is. I, I just love it. But anyways, I was curious, do you know where there's a good coffee shop around here? You see, that's step one. Step one, I blurted out some information with emotional expression, and then I asked a question and I invited them into my emotional expression, which then causes them to typically open up unless they're really closed down that day. Um, then they'll share something. They'll either add to my conversation because they'll be moved by my, my emotion, by my asking, or they'll just share a little bit of information based on what I asked. They'll be like, oh yeah, there's a coffee shop up the street. That, if they share and there's any, any level of openness at all, that gives me permission to ask a second question. The second question being, um, oh really, is that a good coffee shop? Oh, are you from around here? Where are you from? And then that gives me something to build on. Number three, I've cultivated the feeling of being naturally curious. I know what that feels like. I've accessed memories of my, time, of my life of when I've been curious. I've worked on feeling curious. So they feel the curiosity from me when I say that. I've worked on being curious about where the people are from. I've worked on being curious about what people are out doing so that it naturally builds when I start the conversation. And then I go from there. Um, and so this gets conversation started. It allows me to start digging in deeper and deeper. And from there, you can continue the conversation. Now, that's not the theme of this video. Maybe I'll make it the theme of next week's video. If Anthony's not back, we'll go from there. But we have lots of other great videos on Fearless Friday to help teach you how to uh, be more connected, start more powerful conversations, and have more powerful conversations. But if you continue the same process, the same method I just described to you, your conversations will continue to flow. If you keep using curiosity, emotional expression, you keep inviting them in, you're letting them in, into your conversation, people, most people will naturally open and wanna to talk to you. If you move to your head and you get really analytical, disembodied we call it, that's when things fall apart. That's when I walk up and I'm, and I'm gonna show you the difference so you can see how, how it pushes people away. I walk up and I'd be like, um, Hi, uh, my name is Brian. You know, uh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? You know, I, I'm loving today. Uh, can you tell me where is there a good coffee shop around here? I love coffee. Oh, really? What you know? Do you like that coffee shop? Tell me more. About, you know, you, do you see how it's kind of weird? Now it's kind of stuttering there because I was embodying the feeling of a nervous guy. So let me take away the nervous guy and do it again, just so you could see the difference. Now I walk up and I st I stop somebody. Hi. Oh wow, isn't it a beautiful day outside? Anyways, I'm looking for a good coffee shop. Do you know a good coffee shop? Really, Joe's Coffee? Is, co is Joe's Coffee good? Do you, do you go there a lot? Oh, awesome, that's nice. So where are you from? Do you feel the difference? It's so different than what I did. It actually causes people to go backwards and pull inside. So really feel that difference. It, when I'm walking up and I'm curious and I'm blurting, I'm actually feeling the emotions. Hi, oh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? and I feel vulnerable right here, and I feel myself enjoying the day. You know, I'm out looking for a good coffee. I'm not from around here. I'm totally lost. I'm, I'm addicted to coffee. Can you tell me where there's a good coffee shop? Joe's Coffee? Oh, do you go there a lot? Oh, interesting. 
Um, where are you from, by the way? You have an interesting accent. You see, I'm showing true interest and that's emotional connection. So you got the formula to start conversations. And what I'm gonna invite you to do is to go out and practice this weekend. 1% at a time, you get better. You get better by practicing a little bit of different techniques over and over and over again. Um, as you develop this ability, you're gonna find it easier and easier and easier to have longer conversations. Uh, because the longer conversations are built off the same process. -y. And uh, down the road, we can continue to create videos about how to have longer conversations that flow but for now, I want you to practice this one this weekend. So go out, put these principles into effect. You've got uh, today, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. And I would say try to do at least five interactions like this a day. You could do 10 or 20 and it wouldn't take very long. But let's set a minimum, a minimum of five interactions a day. It doesn't have to all be beautiful women. It can be anybody. Practice pulling people in so that when you get to those beautiful women, you have some practice under your belt. I recommend that out of those five, at least two be at women that you're really attracted to to get the practice in. And if you really want to push yourself, go for 10, 20 conversations and three to five of them minimum being beautiful women or attractive women or cute women or women that you find interesting. This is powerful. Once you get used to it, practice it get it going and I can't wait to hear your responses. Make sure to comment in the video how this goes for you. Make sure to comment in the video. Let me know if you can see the difference in my two communications, the way I'm, I'm presenting it. Uh, feel free to write down the steps that I said, but don't make them analytical. Just feel them, see them, practice them. Practice them in the mirror, practice them on video. Get that sense of feeling, emotional expression, and then go out and apply it. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then the Fearless Fundamental Sunday video will be out and, um, and make sure to check that one out too. If you like this video, make sure to share, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, smash that like button, and again, make sure to comment. Love having you on these videos, love doing these videos for you, and remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.